Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath. And it's time to get into the bite. Dolphin in the boat. Oh my God. Woo! Mutton snapper Let's right there, this. baby. Let's do this. 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 Have you ever wanted to go out and catch false albacore, also known as bonita, but you just didn't know how to do it, where to get started, what rigs to use, where to find them, how to even go about doing it? Well, in this episode, I'm gonna simplify this process for you by going over what I believe to be one of the most productive, fun, and exciting ways to catch Bonita. That's right, we're gonna go over how to high-speed troll and catch false albacore. Before we get into this though, if you wanna learn more about fishing, grow as an angler, or just see some great and exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. So to get into this, the first thing we're going to do is we've got to explain a little bit about false albacore, also known as Bonita. I interchange these names periodically because it is what they're called. Down here in South Florida, they're called Bonita more often than not. The further north you travel, they are called false albacore. False albacore live cyclical migratory lives. They are found all over the world. But the group that I'm going to talk about is the one that follows a similar pattern to most migratory fish in the Atlantic Ocean. They travel from the Caribbean Sea, up the east coast of Florida, up to New England, and then they will head out towards the deep edge of the Sargasso Sea in the Atlantic Ocean, and then they'll circle back around. Now, when they start coming back around in the Caribbean and they hit Florida, they will split. Some of them will travel into the Gulf of Mexico, but the bulk of the Atlantic Ocean tribe will head up the east coast of the United States. So, that being said, you have to know when they are passing through your area. That way they're at their thickest and you can go out and have fun high speed trolling and catch a lot of them at one time. So here in South Florida, they start showing up big in June and they hang out until late August and beyond. The sizes start growing smaller the later the year goes in. But a little tip, I have found them in way shallower here in South Florida in about 30 feet of water, the big jumbo sized false albacore during the month of December. All right, so when I say high speed trolling, I don't mean we're doing five, six knots. When I'm high speed trolling for Bonita, I'm doing a minimum of 12 knots. What I'll do is I comb the reef's edge, making smooth S-shaped curves until I find them. I'm talking the deep edge of the reef particularly. Around 150 feet to 250 feet is where I'll travel until I find them. Once I find the depth that they're at, there's no reason to travel much further than that depth. They're gonna be there for that day. That's where the food is. Benita eat a lot. They're always swimming, they have no swim bladder, so they're constantly replenishing the loss of energy by eating. So, if you can find the food, you'll find the bonita. Now, you might say 12 knots is kind of fast for a little fish like a bonita. Not at all. You can catch them all day long. It is one of the most productive ways to catch bonita, high speed trolling. Now what I want to do is I want to go over the setup that I use for high speed trolling. And this is it. When I'm doing high speed trolling for Bonita, I got one rod, one reel, and one lure that I use. What this is, is this is a Pen 12H. It's a discontinued reel by Pen from the International Series. It's spooled with 20 pound test. The rod that this is on is a seven foot star rod from the Handcrafted Series. It's got lots of flex for that shock absorbency for setting the hook on the high speed strike. Now, this lure that I use is one of my favorite lures for any type of trolling, but especially when I'm doing high speed trolling for Bonita. What it is, is it's a Billy Bait Mini Turbo Slammer. It's a four and a half inch lure. It's in the color pearl blue, and I have it rigged up with 40 pound monofilament. So what I wanna do is I wanna show you how to rig up 
the Billy Bait Mini Turbo Slammer for high speed trolling. To do this properly, you're gonna need to get set up with a few things. You're gonna need your lure, the Billy Bait Mini Turbo Slammer in the color pearl blue. Two 50 J hooks. These are from the company Mustad. Size five barrel swivel. This is also from the company Mustad. We're also gonna need six to seven feet of 40 pound mono leader. And you're gonna need cutting tool. The first thing we're gonna do is we are going to make a double hook tandem setup with the two 50 J hooks. So to do this, at the back of your hook where the shank loops around and meets the shank again, you have a little separation right there. You put your cutting tool in between it and you pinch down on it and it creates a space. With that space, you take your other hook, you insert it backwards and that's how you do it. Now, to close that space back up, what you do is you put it in the back side of your cutting tool and you pinch it back together. Next thing we're gonna do is we're going to take one end of our leader. We will feed it through the nose of the lure until it comes out the back. We are going to take this end, which will be the business end of the lure and we're gonna attach our hooks with a basic clinch knot. There you have it, clinch knot ends in a perpendicular position. If your knot doesn't look pretty, no line warping, nothing like that, you want to cut it off and start over. Trim off your tag. What you'll notice is that when this lure is said and done, the hook trails just barely beyond the end of the lure. This is what you want. When fish come up and hit a prey fish, Typically, they tag the back end of it, which is the tail. That way this disables the prey. If you have a hook hanging out here, it usually gets the hook up on the first time. It prevents what is called a false positive hit. Basically where your rod bends over, the line zings out a little bit, and then it loosens back up as if you got hit, but you didn't get the hook up. The next thing we're gonna do is we are going to go to the other end of our leader and we're going to attach the barrel swivel with another basic clinch knot. Trim off the tag. And that's it. Your lure is done. You're ready to go. The next part of this process is you have a snap swivel. This is a size seven snap swivel from Mustad. This is hooked onto your main line of your reel. You're gonna want to come and feed the barrel swivel onto the snap swivel. Close your snap swivel. And you're good to go. All right, and that is how you rig up a Billy Bait Mini Turbo Slam. I like to use it for almost every style of trolling, but like I said, I especially use it in particular for high speed trolling for Bonita. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna head out onto the water. We're gonna dunk the lure in. Like I said, one rod, one reel. We're gonna do some examples of high speed trolling for Bonita. So let's get on into this. What we're gonna do here is something a little special, something that I like to call accelerated speed trolling over the deep edge of the reef. And what we're targeting is we are targeting Benita. We're gonna throw in a uh, Billy Bait Mini Turbo Slammer in the color pearl blue. Only one rod, one reel, one rod. We're gonna be trolling between 12 and 14 knots over the deep edge of the reef. See if we can nab some Benita. Let's get this on. We are approaching fall, so the Benita are about ready to start disappearing. I wanna stock up 
best I can. And this is one of the best ways that I know to catch them is with accelerated speed trolling. You know, it gets the adrenaline pumping. Always use that tether. Definitely all about the speed at this point. If you don't go high speed, you're not gonna get them. You need them to chase down your bait. speed trolling for Benita. Good fish. 
expect it and you're heading in, oh boy, always caps that day off, makes it even more exceptional than it was. Here comes our fish, he's up on top, about 10, 20 yards out. Okay, so that was some good old-fashioned fishing fun, catching some false albacore on the high-speed troll. So, one thing you may have noticed is that I lay back on the throttle when I get the hookup, that way I can retrieve the fish. Typically, when you're high-speed trolling, you don't wanna lay back. In times like when you're fishing for Wahoo, if you get a high-speed troll for Wahoo, you don't let off that throttle, you keep going, that way you don't lose your fish because you're gonna create a big hole in the mouth. When you're high speed trolling for Benita, you want to let off that throttle because you're using light tackle. Wahoo, you're using big gear and you can kind of horse the fish in, especially once he starts swimming streamlined. Benita will turn on their sides and you're just going to keep having line peel out from your reel and you won't be able to retrieve them. Best bet is to lay off the throttle and reel them in. You can keep a little bit of forward momentum that way they don't, you know, turn on their sides and start doing death spirals and get unhooked. So, as you can see, high speed trolling for false albacore is nothing complicated. It's really meant to be fun. You go through those times a year when you can't seem to escape the Benita. You may as well make a day out of it. Have fun. Catch as many as you can. Take them home. Fillet them out. Make your strips. Make your chunks. Make your slaps. They make all sorts of great baits for reef fishing, deep dropping, planer trolling, everything. Get your fill. Have fun. Like I said, sometimes bonita are extremely unavoidable. You can't get through them to the other fish. So you may as well learn to embrace these times, take advantage of it, and employ a tactic that is ultra fun, ultra exciting. Trust me, once you get that hookup on the high-speed troll, it's addictive. You're going to want to keep doing it. All right, folks, that about does it for this episode. Hope you had fun. Hope you enjoyed. Now, I hope you learned a little bit about high-speed trolling for false albacore. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing, going wherever the cool wind takes us.